here's my challenge for you. Find me an easier way to do a multiple drop-down list than this. Okay, check this out. I just want to simply pick, let's say, a movie. It changes colour. I can say it's an action movie. I can pick from the drop-down, Die Hard. I can pick another one, size. I can say it's small. I can say it's tiny. And then if I change this from action to maybe comedy, I could pick The Hangover. Okay, and it's just three formulas. So three formulas. Formula number one is this one. Formula number two, a little bit longer. It will take a little bit of explanation. And formula number three, a shorter one. And that's it. With those three formulas, we can do this. This is the simplest methodology I've come across. And I'm going to show you how you use it. You can even just download this file. Okay, let's go. So a huge shout out goes to Celia Alves, who did a video on something very similar. And the technique she used in here was the key to unlocking this for me um, and making it really simple. So massive shout out to Celia. I'll put a link to her video uh, in the show notes in the description below, okay? Um, so firstly, your drop down lists, you need to set it up like this, right? So here's my main drop down color. Then the sub items are repeated. And the, the sort of dependent items on that are repeated. So it's a bit of a pain to set this up, but once it's done, it's done, right? And it's pretty simple, you know, it's logical. Okay, so what do you do then? Well, essentially then you go to a column and you have to write a little formula, okay? And this is the formula I'm gonna write. I wanna get the unique items from this, okay? So here we go, equals unique. If you haven't seen the unique function before, wow, you know, you're know you missing out. You know, there's the, there's the unique list. If I wanted it in order, I could wrap it in a sort as well, okay? If you wanna be a bit fancier about it, okay? So you can wrap it in a sort and then it goes in alphabetical order. So that's my starting point. That's my first drop down list. Okay. The next one, this is the trickier one. Okay. This is a bit of a longer formula, but I basically want to go and grab all the level two items for color. So I want to grab, if somebody picks color, I want to grab the different ones here. If somebody picks movie. So this is my second sort of list, my drop down list for level two. Okay. So here we go. Let's break, break it up. Equals filter. So I want to filter list two, okay, comma, where list one equals this, okay? That's my little list for color. But I just want the unique items, so I'm going to wrap it in a unique. And then I want it to go across because then I want a unique list for movies and a unique list for rows. Okay, so I'm going to go over here, and again, you could do a sort in there as well. Um, so turn that into a row, or you could do transpose. Okay, unfortunately, you can't refer to an array of an array, so you can't have it spill down. So you do actually have to drag this one down. Now, if I do that and I go past the list, I get this calc error, which is pretty ugly. So if a filter Basically, it's the filter that's returning the, um, the error. So I'm just going to go back up here. I'm going to amend this to say, hey, if the filter is empty, just re re return the word empty list. Okay, and that's it. And that's the most complicated formula of this whole thing. Okay, so if you got that far, if you've stayed with me this far, right, this is going to be straightforward. Okay. And to make my um, formulas and other formulas easier to write, I'm just going to name this whole column. So I highlight that whole column, go to the name manager box here and call it level one choice. Just type in that box up the top left and press enter. I did the same thing for this, okay, equals, and just type in the top box level two result. Pretty straightforward, right? Then the third formula, and the magic bit that Celia sort of pointed out was this. Check this out. If someone picks color, 
I want it to show, so let me just remind you over here, if somebody from the main list picks color, I want this to populate. If somebody picks movie, I want this list to populate, okay? And this is the thing, equals x lookup, okay? Look up this in that first column, and I named it level one choice, just to save me going to highlight the column, okay? Return level two result, okay? That was the other column name. And if I press enter, it just returns red. And let me just go and show you. Red was just this thing, but I want to return the whole array. And this was the magic bit. I didn't know or really think this could be done. Never thought about it, but then Celia did it in her video. You put a little hash on the end and that then refers to the array and it spills. So now you get red, green, and blue. And if somebody picks movie, Okay, they've now got the three movies, or if somebody picks size, awesome. Okay, so that is pretty cool. So then when, where do we use that? Well, let's go over to our drop down list and set this up. So we highlight this and we go to uh, data, data validation. Okay, and this is gonna be a list. And the source, if I go back here for that very first one, the source is simply this, and then you put a hash at the end. Okay, that refers to the array then. So click OK, and this is all my drop downs. So each one of these is that. Then this one, let's go back here. So the secondary drop down, let's go back here, and we'll just grab the formula that we have in here, control C, go back here, data, data validation, okay, go for the list, and you paste that formula in. You can actually use that formula in a data validation. The only thing we have to tweak is that we're not looking up AB5 anymore, we're looking at the cell right next to the one that we're highlighting. Make sure you've got all these highlighted, okay? And rather than AB5, we're referring to H8, okay? So H8, and don't put any dollars or anything in, signs in, so it just sort of spills down, which is nice. And we just click OK. And yes, we do want to return. And it's given you the warning because I haven't actually got anything here. Now we've got color. Okay, I've got red. I can't pick anything here. That's why it's saying it was, you know, until you've picked something at the higher level, Awesome. So then how do you do the next level down? Well, this is the beauty of this technique is that you just come back over here and you just repeat these two columns. So here we go. I'm going to open this up. I've already done it. So I've got a column called level two choice and level three result. Okay. And this is basically a unique list. Let me just go and show you. So a unique this time from this column, give me a unique list. Okay, and then this one is the same formula. Okay, the same formula we just wrote, but instead it's actually referring to these two columns. So everything sort of just nudges along one. And you can just keep going, you keep doing these columns, okay? And then the formula for the secondary drop down. okay, it's pretty much identical. And all I'm saying is, hey, look up AB7, okay, look up AB7, but this time in the level two choice and the level three result, whereas the first one was the level one choice and the level two result. So as long as you keep your logic and your naming convention, you know, sensible, brilliant, okay? So if I go back here, okay, my subdependent dropdown, if I go to data, data validation, and I go to list, and I'm just gonna go Windows key V to bring up my list of last things I pasted. There we go, okay. So if I paste that in, this time I want to look at cell I8. Okay, I8, the one to the left. And this, I want level two choice, 
and the level three result. Click OK. And now this is light red. This one, there were no options for medium. What if I did big? There's the option ginormous. And if I change this to movie and sci-fi, what have we got under here? Aliens. Pretty cool. Okay, this is pretty cool. What about the conditional formatting? Well, it's the same formula, but with a little sort of wrapper around it. Okay, with the conditional formatting, let's say somebody had picked Die Hard, okay? I just wanna check if Die Hard exists in this list, because if somebody then picks comedy, Die Hard, the count will be zero, Die Hard does not appear, and therefore I wanna flag it as red, okay? That's the logic behind what I'm trying to do. Okay, so let's just do that. So equals count ifs, this range, okay, comma, does this exist? Okay, it does, so I don't want it to go red, but if somebody picks a different category, like comedy, the count ifs is zero, and therefore I do want to return it. And rather than a7 hash, we could actually just put this whole formula in there. Okay and I've got to get rid of the equals. And you get the same answer, you know, that's a zero, but if somebody changes it to action, you get a one. So it's just a one and a zero toggle, okay? So this formula, okay, I am gonna copy it, Control C. I'll go into this, this was for the subdependence. So we go uh, home conditional format, formatting, conditional formatting, new rule, user formula, paste it in. So what are we saying? Look up A, B, 7. It's basically the cell to the left. So in here, this was I, 8. Okay. So look up the value. The range is coming from I being driven by I, 8. And it's level 2 choice, level 3 result. And check the value in A, B, 9. Well, it's really this cell here. So that's J8. And if it, oh, sorry, I've got to then say equals zero. So if the count equals zero, then we want to format it with a red background and bold white font. And click OK. So then if somebody changes the movie from sci-fi to comedy, Aliens goes red because Aliens doesn't exist in the comedy generated list. Brilliant, okay? And you can actually cop, you can go to this and you go home, conditional formatting, manage rules, duplicate the rule, okay? Go to one of them, change what the rule applies to. I want it to apply to this column, enter, okay? So that's now going to uh, I, column I, edit the rule, and this time change it to the level one choice and the level two result, and click OK, and click Apply. All right, so if now if somebody changes this to color, this one goes red until they pick a green, then this one needs to be frog. So let's just remind you of those formulas. Check out the links in the description for downloadable versions of this file. Let me know what you think. Have you seen an easier version of this? I've done a video on this a while back. It was horrible. It was hard. It was mind-blowing how I did it. This is so much better. I'll also put a link to Eric Ohm's um, solution that he's done in uh, using um, lambdas. And if you haven't checked out Eric's YouTube channel, which you might not have because it's brand new, check out some of the stuff he's doing on there. It's pretty awesome. So thanks to everybody for watching. Hope you really enjoy this. Um, let me know what you think. I'll catch you in the next video.